Is that a dog in the sky? Don't get too excited. Dogs haven't evolved to fly just yet. But you do have to admit you've seen some pretty realistic shapes in the clouds throughout your life. Some have wondered if that's Mother Nature trying to send us coded messages. Truth is, the secret to these wonderfully shaped clouds lies in our brains. And it all has to do with a little thing called pareidolia, our ability to see patterns or faces in random objects. Scientists trace the explanation down to our ancestors. They claim this ability helped them survive. You see, when people notice something familiar in an object, even if it wasn't really there, it was like they had this predator warning system. If you're not sure if a shadow in the bushes is a lion or just a weird-looking rock, it's better to play it safe and stay away. Speaking of weirdly shaped objects, have you ever seen an orange having a baby? I know what you're thinking, it doesn't make any sense. But the scientific explanation behind this weird phenomenon confirms this is actually a baby fruit. The technical term is vivipari, but it translates to live birth. In animals, vivipari happens when babies grow inside their mum's womb and are born alive. You see it a lot in mammals, and it's rarer in fish and reptiles. But at times, it can also happen in plants. And it's when seeds start to sprout while they're still attached to the fruit, whether it's on the inside or the outside. When you hear the word snails, you don't particularly think of them as these cute, cuddly creatures. I mean, how could you? Most of them are the size of an almond, not all of them, though. In fact, the giant West African snail can grow up to 8 inches long and live up to 10 years. Before you start researching ways you can grow one as a pet, it's important to know these animals are illegal to own in many countries, including the US, mostly because they are considered an invasive species that can damage the environment and even cause serious health problems. Volcanic eruptions are scary by default. But when you combine this with lightning bolts, it can really send shivers down your spine just by looking at the scene. This rare natural phenomenon is affectionately called a dirty thunderstorm. And its process is a bit different from your regular lightning show. For a bolt to happen, it needs a spark. And that spark usually comes from something called charge separation. In a typical thunderstorm, these ice bits in the clouds bump into each other and they create a mini explosion of static electricity. That's what gives us our usual lightning strikes. In a dirty thunderstorm, that ice is replaced with an active volcano. Generally, the bolt blasts off close to the ground within those thick ash clouds that volcanic eruptions create. On the subject of scary things you might find in the wild, tigers are some of the most beautiful but dangerous felines out there. But here's one piece of information that might make them look a bit less frightening. If a tiger should ever need a shave, know that underneath that luscious coat their skin is also striped. It's all thanks to the pigmented hair follicles right under their skin. Just like when you shave and that dark stubble is still visible, this skin-deep pattern isn't featured in all animals with stripes or spots, though. Take zebras, for example. Their skin is actually all black underneath those sharp, contrasting stripes. You'd think an umbrella would do to keep you protected during a storm, but for this next one, you might actually need a helmet. Recently in Italy, in the scorching hot summer, tennis ball-sized hailstones started falling from the sky, seemingly out of nowhere. People got hurt, cars got dented, and windows shattered into pieces. These hailstones usually happen during a thunderstorm. You see, inside these fussy clouds, there are strong updrafts, or winds, that act as elevators for raindrops. As these drops get carried up, they end up in parts of the sky that are way lower in temperature, at times even freezing cold. Once these drops freeze, they start bumping into other liquid water drops in the cloud. This makes the stone get bigger and bigger with each collision. When it gets heavy enough, it falls to the ground as hail. What have I told you? There's a way you can find precious jewellery on your dinner plate. Depends on what you order, though. 
Surprisingly, there's a 1 in 10,000 chance you might stumble upon a shiny pearl if you go for oysters. Pearls happen when tiny pieces of debris sneak into that strong shell. The oyster's solution to this inconvenience is to encase the intruder in layers upon layers. Should you ever be lucky enough to find a pearl while out for a bite, know it might be worth anywhere between two to four grand. Pearls that come from edible oysters aren't as pricey as the glam shiny ones you might find in a jewelry store, which can cost up to $100,000 a piece. They simply don't sparkle as much. Sure, having a sunflower growing from your gutters might make you feel like this ethereal forest fairy, but it's really not something you should be happy about. You see, if there are plants growing in unusual places in your house, it might need some serious cleaning. Take gutters, for instance. If they're not washed down regularly or they're not slanted right, things like leaves or pine needles might start piling up in there. As time goes by, it all breaks down and turns into organic compost. Moss, mildew and mold love this type of environment and they nestle in there. Plus, the wind might also make things worse by carrying seeds from nearby trees. Before you know it, you've got an impromptu little garden that could seriously damage the structure of your house. Come on now, a tree that can walk? I mean, sure, it has its roots on the outside, but it can't possibly move. Well, you might want to hear about the tree they call the walking palm. To see it in real life, you'll have to travel to the rainforests of Central and South America. Truth is, it's not really walking in the way we humans do, but it's got a unique way of getting around. It grows new roots in the direction it wants to go, and as these new roots take hold, the old ones in the opposite direction fade away. This makes it seem like the tree is moving, but in reality, it's a really slow and boring process. Some say it takes a few years for this tree to change its location altogether. The whole walking palm story has been around for ages, with rainforest guides passing it on to curious travelers, generating all sorts of creepy stories. In the world of science, the idea first came up in 1980, when a scholar suggested that the tree uses this root strategy to escape from obstacles, like, say, if another tree falls on it. You wouldn't expect a tree to walk like you wouldn't expect a fish to have blue flesh, right? Sorry to break it to you, but the cute lingcod is here to bust that myth too. This unique fish can be spotted anywhere from Alaska down to Baja, Sa Baja, California, but their primary spot is out in British Columbia waters. They're these big mouth scrappy fish that are both fun to catch and tasty to eat. Usually, they're a mix of brownish red or sometimes greenish gray with white meat. However, there are some specimens that turn electric blue. Specialists believe this blue hue comes from a chemical called biliverdin, which is in their bile. But since this phenomenon hasn't been studied thoroughly, no one's quite sure how this substance works and why it only affects some of these fish. By looking at the available data, it turns out that the lady lingcods are more likely to be blue. Also, the smaller specimens and the ones hanging out in shallow waters might have that cool blue tint too. I wouldn't get too excited about an electric blue dinner though. Once the fish hits the pan, the pigments fade away quickly. Apart from the color of their flesh, animals can also get creative when it comes to their living accommodations. Take this larva, for instance, which decided to settle in a jacket out of all places. It went all in, even putting in some sewing work to make sure it keeps itself protected. They generally pick a tree branch or something similar to go through the whole becoming a butterfly process, which starts with a hungry caterpillar popping out of an egg. This caterpillar, or larva, eats leaves, getting larger and longer as it goes through its skin-shedding chapter. At one point, it stops feasting, hangs upside down on a twig or leaf, and wraps itself up in a cozy cocoon. Inside this safe covering, the caterpillar goes through this amazing body makeover and finally emerges as a butterfly or a moth. Not all animals want to stand out, though. Some make it their entire life's purpose not to be noticed, just like the wraparound spider. This little critter belongs to a group that contains about 17 other species, 
and they all call Australia and parts of Oceania home. They're great at hiding and it's almost unfair how cute they can be, considering they're so deceiving. They can squash themselves perfectly flat against tree branches because of their unique body shape. Their bellies are like upside-down dishes, fitting snugly to the tree's curves, and their fuzzy legs help with the entire costume as well. But what really sets them apart is their stunning camouflage. They've got these oval disc patterns on their bellies that make them look like little leopard spiders. Speaking of spiders, ever wondered why some of them take so much time to intricately design their webs? Everything seems to have a purpose in nature, and so do these amazing spidery patterns. First off, they make the web more visible to creatures other than the spider. Like us clumsy humans, for instance. This helps protect the web from accidental destruction. It's annoying for us to stumble into a spider web, sure, but it's even more detrimental for the spider. Another reason for these designs is camouflage. They help the spider blend in with its surroundings, making it hard for other critters to spot it. That web can even attract prey to specific parts of the system, like a well-placed trap. And there's also the matter of stability. Spider webs are already really strong, but these designs add some extra grip. This means that when a big, struggling bug comes crashing in, the web doesn't get too damaged. When you look at these pictures, you're surely thinking of AI-generated images made for some sort of spa or yoga studio. But they're real, and they also formed naturally. This mesmerizing phenomenon is appropriately nicknamed Zen Stones, and they're basically pieces of rock stacked on top of really skinny pedestals of ice. It was initially believed that these rocks sit on the ice, catch the sun's rays and melt the ice beneath them, leaving just a little pedestal of ice to hold them up. Then, at night, the water under the rock freezes again. Some think the wind plays a part too in shaping the ice so nicely. However, two French physicists say that's not an accurate explanation. They believe it has something to do with a process called sublimation. It's when ice or snow goes straight from a solid to a gas without turning into a liquid first. According to this theory, the rock provides shade, and this slows down the sublimation of the ice right under the rock. But the ice a bit farther away sublimates faster. So, it may not all be about the rock's warmth. You'd also want to use these next images as your laptop wallpaper. Only in this case, it's not some beautiful random phenomenon. It might actually indicate something dangerous. You know how we sometimes see those plant leaves that look like they've turned into lace or have lots of tiny windows in them? The technical term for this is skeletonized leaves, and the cause for this can vary from plant to plant. Either way, it's usually the work of bugs, conditions, or sometimes even chemicals. But the top culprits are these little insect pests. For some reason, some of them don't enjoy eating the veins of the leaves, just like you might want to skip the bones in your chicken wings, so they just munch around them, creating these beautiful patterns. What do you get if you mix a butterfly with a zebra? The zebra longwing, of course. You can spot these butterflies in Mexico, Central America, and even as far north as Texas and Florida. What's really interesting about them isn't just their zebra-like striped wings. Most other butterflies can only sip nectar through their long, straw-like organ called a proboscis. The zebra longwings, however, can eat pollen directly, and that's quite a big deal for such a delicate insect. That's because pollen is packed with proteins and it gives them more nutrition from the plants they visit. This diet helps them live longer, up to six months. Seeing how some butterfly species live just a couple of days, that's quite a lot. And that extra time is handy for them to lay eggs and keep their life cycle going. While we're on the subject of butterflies, you may have wondered why they have so many different varieties of patterns on their wings. You see, these patterns serve some really important purposes. They can help a butterfly blend into the background to hide from hungry predators. Or they can ward dangerous animals away by using colors that are generally associated with poisonous substances. And then there's the romance angle. 
Butterflies use the flashy upper side of their wings to impress potential mates. Think of butterfly wings as these two-sided billboards. One side's for flirting and the other's for survival. I mean, aren't those butterflies romantic, trying to impress with their outfits? What if there was a way you could also impress your partner by taking them to a magical beach where the waves sparkle in the dark? Thankfully, you can find such locations in many areas around the world, from New Jersey all the way to Puerto Rico or Japan. And it all has to do with a little thing called bioluminescence, and it's when living creatures emit light. In fact, it happens more often than you'd expect. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says that over 90% of ocean creatures can do this trick. Tiny phytoplankton can do it, as well as some tiny shrimps, beetles, and even squid. It's not a well-known phenomenon, because it's usually found deeper in the ocean. Another equally as beautiful body of water is the surreal Uyuni Ayoni, salt flat in Bolivia. By looking at these pictures, you'll get why it's also called the mirror of the sky. It's so vast and blindingly white that even Neil Armstrong, the astronaut, once thought it was a giant glacier when he looked at it from space. In reality, it's this enormous salt flat peppered with little volcanic islands and some interesting wildlife too. People from all over the world come here every year to take a stroll on what seems like an endless mirror. Underneath all that salt, this place is also hiding 50 to 70% of the world's lithium reserves. You know that expression, you can't have cake and eat it too? Turns out you can when it comes to some species of trees. Let me explain. It's possible to have multiple types of fruit growing from the same trunk. This can happen naturally, but you can also intervene and make it a reality. Maybe you were thinking about planting some fruit trees in your yard, but can't make up your mind. If you're tight on space, it makes for even more of a difficult decision. Well, the solution is called grafting, a clever method of making new plants without seeds. With grafting, you can actually grow more than one kind of fruit on a tree that's already there. There's one thing you need to make sure, though, that the fruits you want to graft onto the tree are somewhat related. You can't mix and match fruits like oranges and apples. They've got to be in the same fruit family. What's awesome about these trees is that each type of fruit keeps its own taste and ripening schedule. The downside is these multi-fruit trees need a lot more maintenance. Take a fruit cocktail tree, for example. It's got four types of fruit and you'll need to do some regular pruning to keep things balanced. Without it, one of the fruits might get too greedy with the nutrients and the others won't get much. Canada's Arctic region has a weird spot that's been intriguing scientists and visitors for ages. They are called the Smoking Hills because, well, that's exactly what they look like. Sure, they are technically cliffs by the sea, but they seem to be on fire, and they've been doing it for centuries. You'll find them near Cape Bathurst, Bathurst, in the far-off Northwest Territories. The first person to lay eyes on them was Captain Robert McClure back in the early 1800s. He was searching for the lost explorer, Sir John Franklin, and thought the smoke might be a signal. But when he got there, all he found was burning rocks. He even took a piece back to the ship, and it burnt a hole through the captain's desk. Your first guess might be volcanoes. It turns out that under those rocks, there's this brown coal rich in sulfur called lignite. When erosion and landslides uncover it, it catches fire and sends up smoke. Plus, it makes the rocks look all colorful, like a rainbow. Interesting as it is, it's difficult to reach. You'll either need a helicopter or a boat. Unlike these videos, which will always be a simple click away once you hit that subscribe button. While we're still in the Americas, let's head over south to meet the Venezuelan poodle moth. It's not a fancy name for a designer dog breed. It's this incredible yet mysterious insect that's been stirring debates between experts for years. The first images of this creature seem to date back to 2009, and it got its name because some say it's like a mix between a moth and a poodle. Since we have so little information on this creature, scientists can only make educated guesses. 
Of course, there are voices in the scientific community that say this insect doesn't exist at all, especially since multiple hoaxes appeared online with made-up images of this moth. If the Venezuelan poodle moth is real, it's a good thing the person who discovered it had a camera, right? Just like this next amateur photographer caught an awesome and rare sight at Lake Sammamish sur Mamas in Washington State. Some say it's a horizontal rainbow, but a scientific term for it would be a circumhorizontal arc. The woman snapped the picture from her window at around 2 p.m., and it only lasted about five minutes. Before it all ended, she zoomed in with a better camera and got a closer shot. No filters or heavy editing, just a bit of contrast tweaking. Sure, it might look like a painting, but it's nothing more than an optical phenomenon caused by the sun's rays bending in ice crystals in the sky. When it's fully on display, it looks like a rainbow, but lying flat below the sun. If you're a fan of mesmerizing images with the sky, you might also enjoy the sight of nacreous clouds. They're also extremely rare, but also famous for their beautiful colors. In fact, they look like a rainbow, reflecting off a thin layer of oil on water, or what scientists call iridescence. They come to be in the lower stratosphere, mostly in polar areas, when the sun's just about to dip below the horizon. The ice particles in these clouds are tiny, way smaller than what we might find in a regular cloud. These little particles scatter light in a different way, which is why these clouds have that unique glowing look. Because of their height and the Earth's curve, these clouds catch the sun's rays even when it's technically nighttime. They light up the sky way before sunrise and after sunset you're most likely to spot them when the sun's located between one and six degrees below the horizon. Think of places like Scandinavia or northern Canada, where they're sometimes called polar stratospheric clouds. Oh, and they also only show up when it's extremely cold outside, which is pretty much during the polar winter. Next time you book a flight to Asia, you might want to catch a glimpse of this heavenly pit. After a group of adventurous cave explorers stumbled upon it, it became internet famous. It's so deep it could swallow up the Washington Monument in its entirety. But what's really unique is what they found at the bottom, a prehistoric forest. Not only is it old, but it's also three football fields long, with trees as tall as 10-story buildings. How on earth did this giant hole come about? Geology came to the rescue, providing the answer. These sinkholes are created when groundwater dissolves limestone rock beneath the Earth's surface. Just because you stumble upon something beautiful while exploring the wonders of Mother Nature, it doesn't necessarily mean you should get too close, and you should definitely stay away from brinicles, for instance. Imagine these columns of ice creeping down from above, turning everything they touch into a popsicle. They can appear in the chilly waters of the Antarctic Ocean. The word brinicle itself is a mashup of breen and icicle as they form under floating ice. As they begin to take shape, they squeeze out the salt, making very cold, very salty water. It's so salty, it doesn't freeze, and because it's heavy, it goes deeper down. This salty brine is cold enough to freeze regular seawater upon touch. As it sinks, it shapes a tube with its inner wall melting and its outer wall freezing. People still aren't entirely sure how they work. Now, this next phenomenon isn't as dangerous, but will surely be confusing, if not scary, if you don't understand the physics behind it. It's called a sun dog, but it has nothing to do with your trusty canine companion. It's more like a strange light phenomenon in the sky when two bright spots appear, usually on each side of the sun. It happens when light goes through some icy particles. These ice crystals are like small hexagonal plates, and they're usually found in clouds way high up. The thing is, the colder it is on the ground, the closer they get to the Earth's surface. So when your thermometer gets below a certain temperature, you might get to experience a sun dog. Since these ice crystals are pretty flat as they float down, their faces are somewhat leveled with the ground. When sunlight hits one side of a crystal and goes out through another side that's at a 60 degree angle, magic happens. It makes the sunlight behave unusually. 
Legend has it that nothing can grow in the desert. Well, sometimes magical things can happen even in the driest of places, and it's called a desert bloom. It's when a bunch of different flowers suddenly appear during early to mid-spring, courtesy of high rainfall. Before the bloom, those flowers lay dormant in the ground as seeds and bulbs, but when it rains like it's never rained before, they wake up. Soon enough, insects start buzzing around, birds swoop in, and even tiny lizards join the fun.